Okay, sorry about that. Let's try that again. Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to an exhibition match on actual live match on Geyser Plains between Ivory King and Fred. And it's actually a live match, so the players are paused right now. They are just getting started, and once that happens, we can also get started. Okay, well it looks like, anyway, we can see that the players have, in the pause, decided to get their initial build orders. Ivory King is going for Hovercrafts, and very quickly getting some wind generators with a defender, so he is probably going for a bit more of a cheese build. Typically when you go for defenders, that's a common thing to do. While Fred is going for a couple of laser turrets and a shield bot factor, which on this map is much more typical, though this map actually isn't that much varying in elevation, so the Hovercraft can do just fine. However, given the size, both factories will probably be okay. Once we actually get the game going, we'll see how that pans out, but it is worth noting that GBC Fred is, or should just call him Fred, is setting up very quickly with laser turrets. He is going for very quick defense, while Ivory King, very light on defense, and probably going to be focusing a lot more on attacking with his hovercrafts with probably four or five scrubbers, and trying to one-shot as much of Fred's stuff as he can. And I think the players are about to get started. Warzone. There we go! The game has begun! So, we do know what the players are up to. Just They are getting an early build. Both of them are going very quickly for Metal Extractors. First getting a Metal Extractor, then getting a Factory, rather than plopping down their Factories immediately. Which, there we go. Now Scrubbers are coming up. Two Scrubbers actually for Ivory King at this point. And Fred building Bandits. Not at all atypical. Bandits being the early raider for shield bots, you will see them come up very quickly. Now, the thing is, this map was started with the entire west side and the entire east side available for each for Fred and Ivory King, respectively. Both of them did start in the center, but they don't know where their opponents actually are. So we see that Fred is moving up towards the north side. Sorry, Ivory King moving to the north side. Actually, Fred is as well. Both of them are unsure about where their opponents started. But... Looks like Ivory King will find Fred sooner. Well, both their Raiders will find each other first, but Ivory King will see Fred's base before Fred sees Ivory King's, and that will be a bit of an advantage. However, Ivory King only having two Scrubbers, he doesn't really have a whole lot to one-shot with. He needs to avoid combat at this point, and he, this, he's going to lose this one right here. That's one Scrubber down. The other one's going down pretty quickly, and he's not focusing them at all. He's, in fact, switching towards Scalpels rather quickly. He's focusing much more heavily on... Well, Scalpels are a homing... They're a homing missile firing hover unit that's kind of slow, but their missiles are extremely accurate and very powerful. They have a high reload time, but if you can get them in, they can basically one-shot any raider, and they probably will be able to one-shot a lot of the simpler defenses around the, around the border of the space, or at least two-shot them. This is an interesting choice. It does suggest that Ivory King is deciding to go a bit more defensive, unlike... Fred, who's now well, setting up a couple dirt bags, he really wants to get in the way of Ivory King's hovercraft. The dirt bags are a great way to do that. So at this point, despite the defenses used, it looks like Ivory King is in fact going to be holding back while Fred's going to be harassing. Although Ivory King is still going for some harassment on this convict, it won't be enough for the bandits to come in and take it out, but Scrubber trying to do what he can and unable to do any real damage, unfortunately. That convict able to get out of the way, so Fred getting into a really good position right at the start. A very good position at the start. This bandit... There's a bandit army at this point. He's building more and more of them. Got half a dozen so far, while Ivory King does have his scalpel. He can one-shot these bandits. He can one-shot anything that Fred has, but he's not going to be able to one-shot too much of it. I think there is a small splash range on these things. However, it's not going to be that big. And he does have his commander upgraded. He does have a riot cannon, actually, which is a little bit unusual, but... There goes that dirtbag. The riot cannon definitely very useful against the raiders. And the scalpel, however, only able to get one shot off before going down. But yeah, the riot cannon, kind of unusual. It's a leveler weapon, but normally commanders will be upgraded with a beam laser. And if we look over at... Actually, Fred hasn't upgraded his commander at all. Now, Ivory King does seem to like his riot cannon. I was especially playing with him just earlier today, and he was using it then as well. And definitely against a bunch of raiders is not a bad idea. However, it is something that 
need to be a bit careful about. The beam laser is just nice because it gives you a moving light laser turret. The riot cannon, it's a little bit tricky to use well, but it is definitely a useful anti-raider weapon. And not just anti-raider, but anti-raiders is definitely what it's specialized for. And so now Ivor King moving towards the center. He is trying to take some map control of the center while Fred going instead towards the south and taking economy more directly. Now, Ivor King's move is definitely very aggressive. He does have some of the southeast taken for himself. He doesn't have... Neither player actually has the north right now. Taking the center, definitely gutsy, but it's also not really well supported. Unfortunately, Commander taking a lot of damage from Defender and Rogue set up by Fred. Fred's definitely got more map control in the center. Ivory King's posturing will not be at all useful, but Scalpel coming in to try to turn the tides. Once again, I don't think it's going to do too much work on its own. Against the Rogues here, Scrubbers could do pretty well. Scalpels would do well with a lot of them, but it's kind of an even match. The big advantage Scalpels have, of course, is the fact that they are able to have home... Their missiles do home. They are able to one-shot the rogues, but they're also... Let's see, 120 metal to 220 metal. Yeah, they're about twice as expensive. But... And, but they're also slower, so that means that the rogues can hit them pretty well. However, that Scalpel has been wasted. Fortunately, Ivor King has been throwing away a lot of his units, which for Hovercraft is not a good idea. Hovercrafts really rely on having a critical mass of scalpels or scrubbers, especially scrubbers, and pulling them in in the right position in order to just deal a ton of damage. That is, of course, what we're seeing now is how much damage that actually can deal. But unfortunately, that's not... Well, that's not going to be a whole lot of damage if he doesn't rebuild more units. And he is getting a lot of quills, possibly... Use, well, he is using at least one of them to push his factory forward. Of course, the problem is that he only has 12 metal coming in and 8 energy coming in, which means he doesn't have really enough to support that. He is trying to get more power plants, which is good, but at this level, the wind generators generating pointed energy each. They're about as effective as solar generators for cost, but of course weaker. There aren't a whole lot... Of, there's this area here, but there aren't a whole lot of raised areas on this map where wind generators are going to be especially useful. There's this hill and this hill over here, and that's about it. A lot of it is pretty flat or depressed. Which means that we are going to see Ivor King... Actually, his commander getting up to a bad position. Maces are pulling up, but the dirtbags taking up all their... Well, all their attention while the rogues from behind deal the damage they can. However, Ivory King doing a great job dodging with his commander and with his mace. Very nice there. When it says... When you have yellow on them, it means that the player who controls the unit is selecting them. And that is... Extremely useful to see because, of course, it means that we see exactly when Ivory King is doing something tricky with those units. Nice attempt by Fred to... Actually, pretty successful attempt by Fred to mess up the terrain. Like I said before, Hovercrafts really rely on flat terrain, so these hills here will block them. They actually block bots as well, other than spider bots. But that will help, though one of the hills was just knocked down partially by a shot. By one of the rogues, I should say. However, even with these... Even the alterations of the terrain, it's... Not that much of a disruption. The maces can still get around. They can't really benefit from the cover of it, but they can still get around pretty well. And Ivory King, with all these maces, is actually doing a pretty good job getting a good number of them. Getting rid of Fred's commander, too, though Fred's commander had been upgraded, did have a beam laser and energy cell as normal. That, or I should say as normal. This is the, that's the more typical thing to be done. Fred, at this point, has not upgraded his commander any... Or sorry, Ivory King has not upgraded his commander any further. Fred obviously can't. His is dead. And he is moving back a bit. Now, I think Fred... Fred is getting some thugs, not a bad idea. A few, probably half a dozen of those will be able to take care of the maces without too much issue. They are doing a great job dodging the rogues, though. That's actually pretty nice to see. But it's the shields that's going to get in their way, because the lasers cannot penetrate shields, and enough shields together, they all work together. They all buff each other up. Or rather, they all are shared energy. Which means the lasers will have a harder time getting through it with enough shields. However... May not matter. The important thing is that the thugs get close enough in the time they have with the shields they have. As long as they can do that, the maces aren't going to last too long. So Ivory King's still a bit of the, on the back foot. He is very much focused on his mace strategy. He has 97 maces queued up. He is not backing down from this. And he is making sure Fred is not expanding to the north, which he isn't. But he is expanding towards the south. And Fred doesn't have a whole lot of expansions at the south. He has taken what he can, but there wasn't a whole lot of resources to the south to begin with. Much more as you can see in the north. Six, actually seven spots to the north. Well, ten spots 
for this. Actually, yeah, more like 11 spots in the north, some of which are actually pretty tasty, too. These three are just one medal each, but the ones at the top are two and three medal each. So, that top section, the north side is much more valuable than the south side, but the south side has been taken by Fred, while Ivory King taking the entirety of the east side, and he's also got enough energy that he doesn't have to worry about that for a while. However, he's also not needing that. His metal is where he's falling back. He does have a lot of it based on Reclaim, and Reclaiming his own mace is pr too decent effect for the Thugs now coming in. Fred's Thugs coming in. I think this is going to be it. The Thugs are going to be able to take out Ivory King's commander with no trouble. The Riot Cannon is actually proving some of its worth. It can splash through the shield slightly, which is handy, but of course the real problem is that the lasers, the maces, which are the main focus here, can't get through it. The Scrubbers also cannot. Gauss weapons no longer are able to penetrate shields. They used to be able to. This, that was patched away about two or three major versions ago. But doesn't matter. The Scrubbers are going towards the north, and that will be definitely Ivory King's trump card. He's trying to take out Fred's base without Fred being able to notice. However, Fred does have a lot of units inside of Ivory King, so really it's a question of how well they can... well, how well this battle goes. Because even if the Scrubbers get through and destroy Fred's base, Fred can still destroy Ivory King's base. And Fred has this nice safe section towards the south. He has a convict there. He can rebuild if he has to. And the only thing is he is slightly behind on metal because of reclaim, I think. No, no, it's it's because of production. There's no real reclaim going on for Ivory King right now, but there is the north side being taken by Ivory King. So Ivory King is going forward, but a roach nicely placed, getting rid of these scrubbers. Nicely done by Fred. I feel bad for having not noticed that, but still, even with that... These scrubbers are dealing a fair amount of damage, getting rid of the metal extractors, and this laser turret being the thorn in their side will... This scrubber will not be able to finish off the laser turret in time, just barely at the end of the reload cycle. And this thug trying to finish off the mace, but not quite able to do so. One thug on its own, not the best. Now to the east side, we see that the battle is definitely going in Fred's favor. A halberd has been sent out to try to get through these thugs, and doing an okay job with the thugs will be able to take out the energy infrastructure without any problem whatsoever. Or should be able to have any problem. The Halberd getting itself killed. Halberds, of course, when they fire, they lose their defensive status, which means that it makes no difference. Their health is entirely their 1250 health if they are firing. And that is exactly what the Halberd is doing. It is no longer shielded, and that has not worked out for Ivory King. Now, Fred can just move these units back in. He can get those units going from here to here, and that will do it. Like, like this. and Well, like that. And that will completely do it. But that is... Something that he's not actually doing. He's going a bit. He's spreading out a bit more than I expected him to. He may be going for a surround on the base. He's definitely trying to contain Ivory King. Make sure that Ivory King cannot get through that. Now, Ivory King's commander actually has been upgraded once again, just for survival. He's going very much to have this commander as armor plating and auto repair. So he wants to make sure that the commander just takes less damage and heals as much as he can. So the commander is definitely meant to be frontlining. It's not meant to be. A support commander at all. Not at all surprising given the battle commander chassis it's using. Or sorry, strike commander chassis, which is battle commander light, essentially. But even with that, Fred has clearly taken most of the map. Almost the entire map is taken by Fred. Now, of course, the north side has been taken by Ivory King, and that's where Ivory King is getting all of his economy from. Because the north side of the map, like I said before, that is two and three metal expansions across it. Whereas the south side, it does have two, two and three metal expansion. Actually, four metal expansion here. But... It only has a couple expansions. It only has six metal worth of expansions down there. However, Fred still harassing around. Ivory King realizes he can't do much about that. Contain coming in, and he throws in the towel. Well, like, GG's, but he will be throwing in the towel pretty soon. And that will be game. There we go. Fred able to get in. Nice try by Ivory King to take out the north and to try to conquer that. Make sure he had that for himself, but not quite enough. So, that is going to be the game. I hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching. I don't know what other games will be coming up, since this is... that was a kind of impromptu live thing. I imagine they will start playing fairly soon, but... just see what happens when that happens. Hopefully it will happen fairly soon. So stay tuned! If it doesn't happen, I'll just 